Well, just like the high has been so persistent over the British Isles in recent days, the wind, the Kalima wind here in uh, Lanzarote has been remarkably persistent as well. Strong winds east south easterly, and uh, you know the wind that actually here in the hotel faces the east. So that wind has just been almost constantly battering off the uh, patio and uh, over the balcony here. We've got uh, some residue of Saharan dust on both the floor at the table and chairs out, out in the patio as well. So um, pretty interesting stuff. The weather is supposed to gradually improve, but uh, the AE Med Service, uh, the Spanish Med Service, um, has continued to keep the wind warnings going for the eastern portion of the Canary Islands because of these persistent Kalima winds. Certainly the concentration of Saharan dust has uh, been significantly reduced over the last uh, you know, day or so, but um, yeah, uh, you know, for a seven day period, uh, the weather has not been that great. We've had days where the temperature has been struggling to get much above 17 Celsius. Nights, uh, the, you know, two nights ago, there was heavy rain, strong winds, and it felt cold. It actually felt like being back at home again. So, quite unusual actually here in Lanzarote. Yeah, you do get uh, chilly spells, especially uh, in January, where it's the coldest time of the year, of course, here. But um, rather interesting from a weather point of view. But thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It's now the 20th of, uh, of January. Happened to be flying home tonight. So um, basically, we're just uh, enjoying the last hour here in the hotel before we head off to Arecife Airport for our afternoon flight back to Glasgow again. But high pressure over the British Isles has just been remarkably persistent. Highly unusual to see uh, such a blocked, stable pattern for such a persistent period of time. Of course, we had um, a record or, um, you know, the, the lack of wind during the year of 2021 was noteworthy. I think it was the least windy year in some 30 years across the British Isles and it looks as if we're going to continue to see this lack of weather so to speak uh, over the British Isles here when the area of high pressure seems to kind of get deflected a little bit to the south it just kind of seems to rebounce bounce back into place again uh, and position itself close to or just to the west of Ireland but we've got a, a, a bit of a northerly flow coming down uh, today, keeping things uh, rather cool, especially down the east coast. But certainly in terms of midwinter, uh, it's nothing to write home about. Um, there's, um, you know, daytime highs, mid-single figures, upper single figures, just simply not that cold for the time of the year. And, uh, you know, when I look towards the, 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 you know, the final 10 days of the month and even into the month of February, it's not looking particularly great. Um, in fact, the uh, stratosphere uh, polar vortex, the stratospheric polar vortex, um, you know, appears to be uh, strengthening. The core temperature uh, is knocking the door of minus 90 at 10 HPA, which is, of course, the upper levels of the stratosphere. But it looks as if there's now a coupling taking place between the stratosphere and the troposphere. And with a strong uh, mean zonal wind at 10 HPA and a coupling uh, with the lower stratospheric polar vortex, or should I say a tropospheric polar vortex, that would indicate a strengthening of the polar jet stream down at the uh, 40 to 45,000 foot level, which, uh, of course, is not a particularly great uh, indication. What it might do, however... And this sounds like I'm clutching straws. It may, uh, at, at the very least, uh, start to kind of uh, break down this area of high pressure that is, has been so anchored in place for some time. Looks as if it's going to maintain itself through at least the middle portion of next week. And then we may start to see that influence of the stratospheric polar vortex hooking up, coupling up with this, uh, the tropospheric polar vortex and the jet stream over the Atlantic becomes stronger, which, of course, is never a particularly great sign when it comes to cold weather. But you can see here, as I play it through the loop here off the GFS, we've got the area of high pressure that can just continues to maintain itself like a massive boulder in a stream 
the, the all the weather is getting deflected to the north. We're getting weather down to the south. Uh, of course, prime example of that is <coughs> down here in the Canary Islands, where of course we've had a uh, weather to speak about. In fact, there's more weather probably to speak about here. You know, two thousand miles south of Glasgow, as opposed to up across the British Isles here. Uh, so pretty pretty unusual stuff actually. But you can see here as I continue to press through the loop, this is the Tuesday next week here, and you can see that area of high pressure just maintaining itself. Then we notice here that the area of high pressure kind of does start to take, uh, get deflected to the south, I think is because the, the jet stream is becoming stronger, and it's going to start to uh, take more of a southerly track. So we may start to get in on wind, rain, possibly snow as well. And of course, uh, while we've got chilly weather associated with high pressure, um, it's uh, you know the actual cold source uh, air has been constantly getting deflected uh, to the east here. Certainly, central and eastern Europe has had a, a chilly time of it. Um, but you can see here as we press towards the end of the month, we do have opportunity at least for the area of high pressure just to get pushed slightly further out over the Atlantic. And then, of course, it opens the door to northerly uh, airflow here. But, of course, it's all, um, you know, it's all kind of, um, what, what can I say? It's all temporary uh, shots of cold air. It's nothing uh, that kind of locks in place. If we look at the um, at the 850 millibar chart, by the way, I want to actually show you the, the wind gust chart here because this is quite interesting. If we skip back the the to the current setup, the current uh, period here. Of course, here's your area of high pressure here just to the west of the, the UK. We've got winds, of course, down the eastern side of the British Isles. So it's fairly chilly here in that northerly wind. But as I press through the loop here, um, you can see here the lack of weather over the British Isles. Now, you could argue that we're getting a little bit of wind over the northern uh, portion of Scotland here. But notice here that all the wind uh, is generally uh, kept to the north of the UK, which is pretty unusual to see that here. For this, what typically would be the stormiest time of the year, of course, uh, generally speaking here. But you notice here the lack of wind over the British Isles uh, right the way through next week. And then eventually, with the jet stream coming a little bit further south, we we'll start to see uh, wind and weather really uh, becoming more involved in the UK pattern here. So... Uh, certainly, um, it's it looks as if the jet stream is going to start to power up here, and uh, it's not a particularly great sign uh, as we go forward here. So this is off the CFSV two, the weeklies here, a uh, very very dry upcoming seven day period as you can see here, and of course we've had a tremendous lack of rainfall uh, during the uh, you know the first twenty days of the the year so far. Even the uh, 8 to 14 day, which takes us out to the 2nd of February, you can see here wettest weather still to the northwest of the UK here overall. We're getting some precipitation over the Outer Hebrides and the West Coast, of course. And then eventually it looks as if we're going to start to see uh, during the first week of uh, February weather conditions uh, moving into the, the British Isles as the jet stream comes a little bit further south here as we go forward. Two meter temperature normally here, uh, chilly at the moment here, but notice that we uh, have that kind of north south divide once again with the high pressure a little bit further south. Under the high, under the calmer conditions, clearer skies, we've got uh, the frostier weather. But of course, if you get further north with uh, more wind around the top of the high, we've got more cloud cover as well. Mild conditions across the top of the British Isles, and then of course, as we go forward, we've got the uh, my fairly mild conditions generally speaking i think uh, over especially still across the north colder across the south here as we go forward and then i think as we go through next week we start off warmer than normal and then we should should start to see colder conditions coming in with a, a northerly uh, shot of colder hopefully arriving towards the end of next week here uh, and snowfall uh, is nothing to write at home about, unfortunately, either. Finally, looking at the stratospheric polar vortex, and you can see here that we do have um, any sort of attempt of warmth is riding around the periphery of that powerful vortex at the moment. We've got warming, 
over uh, Siberia, as you can see here. And towards the end of the period here, uh, it looks as if the warming tries or at least attempts to try and make a run at the, the North Pole position here. But it's simply like a ball and a pinball machine. It's just bouncing around and uh, it's never really penetrating that uh, that strong vortex. So um, we're starting to run out of time, folks. There's no doubt about that when it comes to sudden stratospheric warming. And of course, once you start to bypass uh, this uh, period now, the middle portion of the year, typically the coldest time of the year, you're starting to say to yourself, could we see a sudden stratospheric warming towards the end of February, even at the uh, beginning of March? That sets off a, a measurable cold spring, for example. That's entirely possible. A cold spring after what has been a disappointing, uh, windless and very, very boring a winter of 21-22 so um, you know I, I wish I could bring you better news but at the moment it doesn't look as if there's going to be anything materialising uh, in the near future so that's it for today next video of course I'll be back home in Scotland and um, I'll have more with you in the next couple of days of course if you like the video please like share and subscribe and keep it right here for the very latest have a great day bye for now